Kia ora. There's a very interesting tension between the two papers in this very compelling session that we've just had. Uh, and I mean, the way in which Michael's unpacked the various strands of settler opinion and of uh, opinions within the, the Rangatira coming up to Waitangi. It, while I've got the greatest sympathy for what you've described, Alistair, couldn't, couldn't an equal interpretation be that this is a very useful propaganda for the, uh, for the Anglican party that has the strongest interest in getting this passed? And so that, in effect, what you're portraying is a perspective on the treaty, uh, which gives it a special aura and has thus had quite a role in New Zealand historiography. But until we actually can desacralize the document, and we can't see the imperfections of the way in which it was constructed. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily accept that, but I think that question has to be put. Is there anything else to uh, is the question that we need to desacralise that is that what the question is? Yeah. Actually, I missed a bit of my um, sorry the last bit of my paper, which is quite the opposite of that. It comes out of um, that quotation or sorry the uh, fourth art oral article uh, that Bishop uh, Pompelier insisted upon, uh, and um, which was responded to uh, by Hobson and Williams, uh, where the Crown actually committed to protect or be kaitiaki of heritinga Māori, wetiriana, uh, tahahi mehenari, uh, and uh, katorika huki. So um, what I, was pro I wanted to propose out of that is actually uh, that that almost calls into question the common assumption that this is a secular nation. <laughs> and uh, so the, while it might be on the losing side of the argument amongst many, I think uh, there's a foundational po or a very strong argument to be to say, actually, we're not, a, we're not secular at all. Well, we might have secular pockets, but actually the foundational po uh, is, uh, is actually sacred. It's covenantal. And while not everyone will want to buy into that, uh, it needs to be acknowledged at least. And so how do, you know, so we, so uh, in a public space, both the secular and the sacred uh, need to work together. Now, if the sacred, if the secular insists on the sacred being silent, uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen uh, because it's not going to happen because Mairano, it's, this has been a, a sacred space in Te Ao Māori. And, it, and I think that in a sense that what, uh, that Pompelia um, piece particularly does is that it actually affirms and makes provision for those that want to acknowledge Te Tiriti as, um, as, a co as covenant to do so. Of course, I cannot insist that anyone else <laughs> would, will see it as a covenant, but it's part of... Uh, um, I guess, in making the claim that it is part of our constitutional DNA and that somehow, the, um, however it's done, whether it's in a constitutional or just an ad hoc way, that we actually, that that is acknowledged. There's a point in the debate, and this is a kind of question, there's a point in the debate, and sorry, I'm getting brain fade too, and I don't know if it's Wakanani or the others, who says... We've just got to go with what the missionaries are saying. And I'm seeing that as a debate between the pagans and the heretics, you know, the, these non-Anglican elite. And he's actually saying, no, no, we've got to go down this missionary line. Now, the key point for me at that is that a number of the missionaries say, oh, whoa, 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 what's happening here? Because in a sense that the... <sighs> The treaty is now becoming an act of faith in what the missionaries have built around the treaty and remembering that these very missionaries have been so committed to non-intervention. They, you know, Henry Williams has spent 
the weeks before Waitangi, down the bottom of the North Island, trying to persuade Māori to give him land in trust and not sell to the New Zealand company. He sees the Tory out in the sea. They don't meet. He is, you know, he's somebody who for such a long time has said, we don't want British intervention. They know that this is risky. So while Williams has sold the treaty because he sees it as impossible to protect Māori interests without it, a number of his colleagues are actually getting quite uh, you know, weary about where this is going and seeing when this breaks down, we're going to be blamed. So, I, and I, I suppose I, this is the old Catholic part of me. I find it a little incongruous that Pompalia's intervention, which horrified <laughs> the Anglicans, <laughs> is now being used as a justification for the treaty as a religious covenant, which that seems a little far-fetched, I would say. But anyway, that's... Can I ask a question? Um, who was signed in the year of our Lord that's actually in the treaty? In the year of our Lord. That is a legal tender document. That was a covenant signed in the year of our Lord. What does that mean if we're... Like, it has to mean something, because in the year of our Lord means that there's a sense of integrity that comes with it and, a t an, intent, and an intent and obligation. And all I hear is Pākehā and non-Christians debating the fact that it means nothing, but it meant something at the time. I want to take it further than that, actually, because Hobson's major message is... I remember he's come here in 1837 where people are fighting with each other. He's saying, in Britain, people are protected, they can go where they like. The law is what he's bringing. What does the law mean to Māori? doesn't mean the common law and statute. It means law coming out of scripture more than anything else. You know, Tatūre is, is not European understandings of law. It's Māori incorporation of law coming through the experiment with Christianity. So in a sense, the treaty is actually guaranteeing a kind of law that is quite different from the way, and I think of, of the way that Sam's master thesis dealt with ideas in the 1850s, where the Europeans are taking very secular views about the nature of the state. Well, they reflected their, the age that they were in. Doesn't matter the ages. Well, but I'm saying that Māori views are very much about you know, religious, the use of Christianity as a form of resistance as well, of course. I would just want to add to that is that I think that the treaty still represents an inconvenient truth for all of us. It's an inconvenient truth for Māori. It's an inconvenient truth for uh, secularists. It's an inconvenient truth for Christians that somehow in the midst of all of that, there are some things that maybe none of us actually uh, would want to, uh, if we were to recreate it, that our different sectors, we would write it in a different way. I'm more of a sort of a providentialist at thinking, well, that's just what's happened. Now we've just got to deal with it, and, and but deal with it uh, as faithfully as we can.